Hello, this is Richard Burdick. I'm principal French horn for the Regina Symphony Orchestra in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. I've been on this job since two, uh, 2003. Before that, I was fourth horn of Sacramento Symphony from 1990 to 1996 when it went bankrupt. So I've had two full-time jobs performing as a horn player in my life and many, many other performances with random groups. The topic today is about buzzing on the mouthpiece. Um, I was a student of Earl Saxton, my first teacher, Earl Saxton, in El Cerrito, California. I studied with him starting in 1974. Earl Saxton, among other things, was third horn of San Francisco Symphony in the late 1950s. He believed in playing the horn like you sing. And he was friends with Victor Kress, a trumpet player from San Francisco Symphony at the same time. Uh, Victor has a very interesting article about how the buzzing works, uh, published in a brass journal in the late 50s. Uh, you can find it somewhere. Um, Victor Kress, C-R-E-S-S. -S. Um, the basic idea is that the voice works and because of the back pressure in the horn, you're not really buzzing as much as you're resonating your whole body with the sound. Um, I see so many people today working on their buzz. <laughs> right, and really forcing out the sound. So if I was to do that. <laughs> forced to me that idea so what we're gonna do oh and by the way I was really looking forward to a class with my colleagues out in the garden or something for the International Horn Society this summer but we have a virus so we're doing it from home I don't have the virus um, and we're talking about how this works because Sometimes people take it for granted. You know, it's like, oh yeah, buzz. I buzz on my mouthpiece, and that's how it works. Well, so if I take, play middle C, I'm making every effort not to change the flow of my air, the buzz of my lips, if there is a buzz, etc. When I'm pulling the mouthpiece in and out. You see, it's just, it's just a subtle wind sound. Now if I go down... Well, I'm bumping it, but... And that's not an easy thing to do, in and out the little hole when you can't see it. But you see, it's wind. So, and it's certainly, let's go back to C, but let's do it this way. Ah. See, that's that, that forced loud sound. It's not very pretty. Really, the difference between buzzing and not buzzing is the space between the lips, allowing for more through, I think it's called the aperture. I was looking forward to having people try this in the class. Um, so we, we're approaching it from the vocal cords. It's like you're singing it and the lips are working, but in a very subtle way. So if we go to the G. Slight buzz. So there's a buzz, but it's not it's not the noisy, ugly stuff. It's just a very subtle, it's more like the vocal cords are working. The breath is relaxed, but you full. Vocal cords are working and you're singing through the horn. So the higher I go, the more it's going to buzz. I think. Right? 
it's a buzz. So that, that implies that maybe for high register work, we should, you should practice the buzz, but also practice relaxation. So relaxation is done by an exercise I've known for a long time. I call it the do-we-ah. It's a great exercise. You take the pitch, preferably in the lower register, bend it down, tightening up with your lips, and then back up to an ah. You have to make an effort to, to go do is normal, e is bent down and tight, and then back up, make an effort to open up and go ah. So do ye ah, and it, it, here. Then it gives you bigger aperture, more airflow, and a big, nice, big sound. Yes, buzzing happens, but it's more relaxed because you're playing like you sing. The do we are exercise really teaches you how to open up. And oh, I wanted to tell a little story. Earl Saxon, when he was third horn in San Francisco, they ran out of rehearsal time one day in, in rehearsal and they had a Brahms symphony to perform that night. This is a famous story. We, we, I know personally that it was Earl Saxon that did this. Um, and the conductor said, oh, we'll just play the Brahms Symphony tonight. And Earl Royce his head and said, I've never played it. And the conductor said, you'll like it. Thank you for watching my class today. <laughs>